My mama always said that my big sister, Linda Kay, just came into the world beautiful and sparkling. To this very day, she can walk into a room and it'll just light up with her very presence. Mama always said that I came into the world wanting to wrap up in her skirts. We were standing at the church visiting after the service and Mama said, Jane, go speak to Miss Harlow. She's our neighbor. And I said no and immediately wrapped up in my mama's skirts. I didn't want to see anybody. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I just wanted to be next to my mama. And she unrolled me and said, Jane, honey, don't you worry. Your mama will teach you to sparkle. And my daddy laughed and said, if anybody can teach you to sparkle, baby girl, it's your mother. I was five years old when my mother took me down to the armory. It was on the boulevard in my little town. We went up some steep, steep steps and into this big, enormous room with windows all around. There were some little girls standing in a line and Miss Mitchell was there. She was the dance teacher and she put me in line with the little girls. I was right in between Bobby Jo Taylor and Judith Ann Reed. They were my friends. I knew them from my neighborhood. Now, Mrs. Mitchell said, little girls, I want you to listen to me and to do what I do. And she turned with her back to us and said, little girls, I want you to point and point and point, point and point and point your toes. After we had done it over and over and over and over again, she finally commanded Miss Willila Gillespie to play the piano. I knew Miss Willila Gillespie because she pray, played bridge with Judith Ann and my mama every other Tuesday night. Miss Willila started playing and her fingers just flew over the piano keys. And my little body just filled up with all that music. And I went whirling and twirling all in that big room until I felt this hand on my shoulder. Yep, it was Mrs. Mitchell. She said, Jane, you must come and learn to stand in a line and you must learn the steps, the proper ones before you start whirling and twirling. Well, the spring recital came and Miss Mitchell pulled me aside and said, Jane, I have this beautiful little watering can just for you. And it was pretty. It was painted red and it had these little tiny satin streaming river ribbons coming out where the water would come out. She said, now Jane, after the little chickadees finish their dance, I want you to walk across the stage to the music and point and pretend to water the decorations, which will be flowers right at the edge of the stage. Remember, I want you to point and point, water and water, and don't you do anything else. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. And when the chickadees finished, I did exactly what Ms. Mitchell told me to do. I went across the stage pointing and pointing to Miss Willala's music and watering those flowers. And as soon as I got off stage, I figured out how to go to my mama in the audience. I could see her when I was watering the flowers 
And I ran to my mama and I crawled up in her lap and buried my head on her shoulders. And I said, mama, I don't want to dance anymore on that stage. She said, Jane, honey, you don't have to. You don't have to dance anymore. Well, when I was eight, my mama took me to Miss Harlow's to learn to play the piano. Now I did pretty good in piano uh, for a while. I, I practiced and Miss uh, Harlow was very good to try to find music that I could play and that I liked. It was the year that I was 13 and it was time for the big recital in the springtime. And all the mothers of the children who took piano came down to the high school auditorium to decorate it. They went in the basement and got out those big wicker baskets to put on each end of the stage and they just filled them full of magnolia leaves and magnolia blossoms. And the janitor of our school came and pushed the baby grand piano just in the place Mrs. Harlow always wanted it and just at the right angle. Well, that night, my mama let me wear my big sister Linda Kay's green net evening gown. It was the one that Linda Kay had worn up to, had worn to the Miss Hospitality contest in my little town. And she won Miss Hospitality and got to go to the state contest. And she wore the dress there and she was chosen as first alternate to the Miss Hospitality State of Mississippi contest. Well, I felt so pretty in that green net evening gown. And I walked out on the stage to play the piano. And I sat down and as I began to play the introduction, I realized that was all I remembered of the piece. But I did remember that my mother had said, whenever you are on stage, Jane, you treat the audience just like they are a guest in your home. You make them comfortable. So I played the introduction through six times and I gave a grandioso chord. I stood up and I bowed and smiled at everyone. That night after it was all over and I ran to my mama. I knew I was too big to wrap up in our skirts, but I sure did want to. And mama said, Jane, I don't believe you'll be needing any more piano lessons. And my daddy said, honey, your piano piece was the best of all of the piano pieces played tonight. It was by far the shortest one. Well, I didn't have any more piano lessons. Mama decided that expression would be a good thing for me to learn about. And so she took me to Miss Kay Evans's great big antebellum home that was down at the other end of the boulevard from the armory. I loved Miss Kay. When I went into her home, there was a huge picture of somebody that was in her family, an ancestor. And she had a wonderful story that she told me about that ancestor. And then she would pick up a piece of um, silver and start a story about it. There was a story about everything in that house. And she found things for me to learn expression on, like, we called them readings. I guess they're kind of like monologues now and poems. Oh, it was so much fun. And before long, I was in high school by this time. Before long, a lot of the clubs in town were inviting me to come and share my readings and poems with the clubs. Now I can tell you that when I was sitting there ready, waiting to go on, I would just be so nervous. And as soon as I would get to the stage and started my poem or a reading, I loved it. 
and I had a wonderful time. But as soon as I left the stage, even as a teenager, I wanted my mama. And if I could have, I would have rolled up in her skirts. Well, the time came for me to go off to college. I went to Mississippi State College for Women. And I joined a social club. We did not have like sororities, but the social clubs were to help the freshman girls learn to find a place on campus. They introduced us to all the clubs and tried to help us get a, a good grounding in school. And I was a, a Lockhart. Now, one, it was that spring of my freshman year that I was at Mama's at home. I didn't live but 25 miles from the college, so I usually went home every weekend. And the phone rang and I answered it. And it was the man from the exchange club. And he asked me to be in the Miss Aberdeen pageant. I said, oh, well, that, oh, well, um, uh, just a minute. And I went running for my mama. I said, mama, mama, there's a man on the phone wants me to be in that Miss Aberdeen contest and I don't want to do it. She said, well, honey, you don't have to. Well, what I tell him, just tell him you can't do it. Okay, so I went back to the phone and I said, thank you so much for inviting me to be in the contest, but I simply cannot do it this year. And he said, well, Jane, I'm so sorry to hear that. I said, well, well, well I'll do it next year. Where did that come from? And I want you to know next year rolled around. And I was home in the spring and they called and he asked me to be in the contest. And I said, just a minute. And I ran for mama. I said, mama, mama, I can't be in that contest. She said, why not, Jane? I said, because I'm going to Yellowstone to work. To Yellowstone? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Bunny Wallace worked out there last year and she called her boss and said, I needed a job and I should get a contract any day now. Uh -huh. Well, uh, just exactly what are you going to do at Yellowstone? Uh, I'm going to be a maid and clean up people's rooms. So you're telling me that you are going to Yellowstone all the way out there to clean up somebody else's room when you don't even clean up your own room. <laughs> she said, you can do what you want to, Jane, but you know what you said. So I went back to the phone. Um, I knew what I had to do. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'll be in the contest this year. Well, I decided if I was going to be in that contest, I was going to do something I wanted to do on the stage and have a good time. I decided I would sing and dance. Well, Mama said, oh, honey, we're going to have to work on your talent. I said, Mama, let me go back to school and think about it. And uh, I'll come back next weekend and, and tell you what I've decided. She said, honey, now you think about that beautiful scene in Gone with the Wind, you know, when I'll never be hungry again. I don't want to be Scarlett O'Hara, mama. And so I went off to college and there were my Lockhart sisters. I found, I told them of my dilemma and what I needed to do. And Cherry Stone from up in Tupelo, Mississippi, taught me some steps to the Charleston. And Mary Beth Edom taught me one of the body little songs the Lockhart's like to sing in the dormitory. And I went back home and I sang my song and did my dance for her mama. And she looked at me. Oh my goodness, Jane. Well, uh, honey, it'll be on stage and you look like you're having a good time. I, I, if it's on stage, it's like acting and that'll be okay. 
And then my mama helped me write a poem to go with this little dance and the song so I could use my expression. And you know, I still remember that talent. And you know what? I'm going to do it for you tonight. Come, let me take you to back to 1923. That was the year that the flapper came to be. With her Chanel dress so short and tight, she sang boopy doo and danced the Charleston all night. Now the roaring 20s weren't quite that tame because those were the years when the red hot mamas came to fame. And down in the speakeasies, two old off-key pianos, they sang their tunes in any old manner. They call me the lame and mamie. I'm a so for torture, I'm the hottest baby in town. And when it comes to loving, I'm a human oven. I really burn them down. They holler water. I really burn them down. And that was my talent. Now, it came time for the contest, and I was standing on the stage in the high school auditorium with all the other contestants. I had on my sister's yellow 100% cotton evening gown that she wore to the Made of Cotton contest in Memphis, Tennessee. Now, she did not win or place in that contest. Mama said she had a little tummy virus so that her sparkle was off just a bit. Now I was standing there and thinking about going to Yellowstone and all of a sudden I saw Bonnie Beth Craig standing in the wings. She was the reigning Miss Mississippi, Miss Aberdeen and on her head was a crown. Oh it did sparkle. And I wondered what it would feel like to wear a crown. But I wasn't gonna wear a crown, I was going to Yellowstone. Mr. Too Fat Fagin, the MC, came out to announce the winners. He had the envelope. He took the card out and he read the first, the second alternate, to Miss Aberdeen is Sue Ann Harmon. Ah, the first alternate to the new Miss Aberdeen is Barbara Jo Taylor. And our new Miss Aberdeen, who will represent our city in Vicksburg at the Miss Mississippi pageant is Miss Jane Owen. What? Bonnie Beth put the crown on my head. And I walked down a ramp that had been especially built for the contest in the high school auditorium. And I smiled at everybody in the audience on this side. And I smiled at everybody in the audience on that side. And when I got ready to make my turn, to go back to the stage, I saw my mama. And my mama was smiling. And I knew that she knew that at last she had taught her baby girl to sparkle.